Hello. In this video, I'm going to share you the method using which you can log into Raspberry Pi remotely after its installation without connecting to a monitor or HDMI port. The method is very simple, simple logic. We know what is the default username and password for Raspbian. On my Raspberry Pi 3, I installed Raspbian Stretch Lite version and default username is Pi and default password is Raspberry. Now simply what we can do is we have to connect to network cable our raspberry pi and then we have to connect to usb port of, of our raspberry pi now simply give on your keyboard type pi pi hit enter once only once not two times wait for three four seconds then you should get that our raspberry pi will be prompting for the password then give raspberry hit enter <coughs> now you should have been logged on to the raspberry pi now how do we confirm whether we are logged on to the raspberry pi or not we can check it there are multiple ways for example we can generate some traffic and observe RJ45 connector as you can notice whenever we have some traffic on our server or any device which is connected to RJ45 we get green light blinking right so if we want to verify whether we successfully logged on or not we can generate some traffic okay so the method which i'm dialing it will also confirm whether you got root access you became root or not so after giving this username and password wait for two three seconds more then simply give sudo su hyphen hit enter now you would have become root on the raspberry pi you should know you should be knowing router ip address of or simply gateway ip address for your raspbian os which which is by default your router and simply <coughs> we can run command ping half an f then the router ip address okay you should know replace this particular router ip add with the router ip address of your network hit enter after this router ip address wait for few seconds have a look on your rj45 light if the ping traffic is, traffic is going on then you will get green light blinking it will simply confirm that yes you logged on to the raspberry pi and you also have root access you became root <coughs> why because this hyphen f flood option is becomes available to root users only in linux
So then press Control C and you will notice that green light blinking is stopped. Now we have to run command system CTL start SSH. When you are giving all these commands, typing on your keyboard, make sure to not to press any other key because that will cause a typo in our command and it will not run successfully. So this is this is what I did on my newly installed Raspbian OS on Raspberry Pi 3 and I know what IP address that particular Raspberry Pi got. We have multiple ways to find out what IP we have on newly installed Raspbian OS. For example, we can log into the router web interface and check what all IP addresses we have given by router to connected devices. So, <coughs> or otherwise, <coughs> You could also run a port scan if you have some other Linux machine. You can run a port scan on your network and you can find out which one is the new IP address. Okay. So let me now try to log into our newly installed Raspberry Pi. Yes, I got SSH prompt giving password Raspberry. So, yes, we are able to log in and I to get this access, remote access, I didn't have to connect to any monitor. Okay, now let me show you that i should get one more session on this server which is from the keyboard when i logged on to the tell type terminal tty01 w command yes so here it is this is the session which i have connected from tty3 using keyboard by default you will get tty0 it's an another thing why i'm getting tty3 by default if you give this pi username and raspberry as password and after logging on remotely if you look at this output w command then you will get tty0 by default okay <coughs> so we logged on we are able to log in to our raspberry pi which is freshly installed and i didn't have to connect to any monitor let's become root on this raspberry pi here ssh is enabled and and the default password for pi user has not been changed so make sure you change the default password Okay, so now the default password has been changed for Pi. Now, why? Uh, one more thing, why I have to run this command systemctl start ssh? Because by default, ssh is disabled to start automatically. This ssh 
which allows us to log in remotely over the network security. This SSH allows us to log in remotely in a secure manner. By default, this service is disabled. How to verify that? <clears throat> we can run command system CTL is enabled, then our service name. So here it is. It is showing that it is disabled. What about the status of this? SSH service which I started manually so currently it is showing it is active running that's why I was able to do SSH to this Raspberry Pi now let's enable it because once we if we don't enable it then again we will have to connect our USB keyboard and then log in as Pi user becomes root with sudo su and start SSS service. So let's enable it permanently. Enable system CTL enable SSH. So yes, now whenever our Raspberry Pi boots up, uh, this SSS, SSH service will be started automatically, and we will be able to log in remotely via SSH. Let's verify it again. System CTL is enabled. SSH now it is enabled. Other <clears throat> there are more ways uh, to do the same thing. For example, in Raspberry Pi we have one command rasp config. We can run that command also. For example. To change the username password network option boot options localization let's check this boot options what do we have okay it is about the desktop wait for network and boot Splash screen. I wanted to show you about SSH option. Here we can define host name. We can define, we can go on via Wi Fi also. Let's have a look on advanced options. Yes. So as, I, as it is fresh, newly installed, and I have some space, plenty of plenty of space unutilized. So this option can be used to ensure that all the SD card storage is available to the to the OS. How to verify this? Let me just flow, come out from this. DFFN H here. <coughs> yes, size it is showing 30 GB for root, so it looks like it is already used. I have used 32 GB SD card. Let's start the recipe config again. And if you want to claim any free space which is available on your SD card, free space which is not utilized for the SBN OS, then we can use this option to expand faster. Okay, so let's run this uh, option once. So I hit enter and the root partition has been resized. The first system will be enlarged upon the next reboot. Click OK. And click finish. Tab tab. 
finish would you like to reboot now we should select yes however i will do i will reboot manually so that let's connect collect this output first these are the outputs these outputs came from our recipe config command so it is running some app disk some disk utility yes it is it is using app disk in background it looks like anyway so yes it, it made some changes to the available space okay. let's take the output of current space <coughs> so, sorry so we will compare it after reboot okay sync reboot the raspberry pi it should not take much time to boot up because we have systemd in use on raspbian os latest yes so raspberry pi came back on the network let's do a search again make up root so do so let's have a comparison between two all right <coughs> so there are no changes uh, file system is showing as it is whatever whatever we had before reboot and that's because all the space was already utilized whatever space was available on the sd card it was utilized however i remember that in past i had to do it manually not manually but uh, using this recipe config to claim all the space available on my SD card I used I had to use this option you can use it also to ensure that whatever free unclaimed space available on on your SD card is available to the OS all right so it is done uh, what all things we did we enabled SSS service to start automatically we have changed the password default password and expanded the file system to whatever space we had on our SD card and space which was not claimed or not available to the OS also this recipe config is one of the interface very quite I mean it is quite simple and very useful we can do multiple things from here for example we can update this tool to the latest version also let's update this tool
okay it was already a latest one let's press key tab key click finish as usual whenever we install a new OS we should also apply all the available updates so let's do that app get update or simply we can run the same command sudo apt get update it synchronizes the package index from the source then we can run upgrade command to apply all the latest available updates to our OS Raspbian OS so we have these many packages available which can be up upgraded 34 upgraded need to get 94.2 MB of archives and after this operation 741 KB of additional sp disk space will be used do you want to continue yes it is always we should do this thing always whenever we install a new OS we should apply all the updates tz data you have systemly oh many many even kernel is being updated so we, we will need to re restart this Res Raspberry OS Raspberry Pi once this upgrade is complete so that we, we are booted into the latest kernel which is which we are updating when we selected this upgrade option it it is applying updates to all the available patches or newer version of packages bug fixes all right so it is going on right now waiting for headers let it get completed it should not take much time patching the updates <coughs> Sorry. So basically, I installed on this Raspberry Pi, I installed. this is the file this is the image file this is what we are running right now on that Raspberry Pi Raspbian stretch light which is released on 27th 7th June 2018 okay so here it is updates going on now kernel update is going going on And for all this, I didn't have to connect to any monitor. Okay. And my purpose to install this light version is to run some server on this Raspberry Pi. 
So most likely I'm going to install pi hole on this, which is a advertisement blocker network level so that all the devices on my network don't get advertisement they should I mean uh, because whenever we open any website you can see there, there, there are multiple advertisements which are most annoying to most, most of the people plus it also takes some bandwidth so it is good to have that pi hole network level advertisement blocker okay so that uh, I, I will try to create video on that so right now it is this upgrade is still going on Open SSS server setting up this variable as C type is exported from my it is coming because I logged on to Raspberry Pi from Mac to avoid this errors we can simply run some other command for example unset as CC type that is a different topic anyway so our upgrade is complete we should now reboot before rebooting let's run a sync command to ensure that all the data to be written is written there is nothing pending to be written to the SD card okay we can run system CTL reboot or simply reboot also or there are multiple ways reboot is complete let's wait for Raspberry Pi to come up Once this server uh, Raspberry Pi comes up, we will again run this app get update and upgrade command to check whether any further updates are available or not. It should not we should not get any pending update in most of the case, cases. So do app get update. Again, let's resync the package index. Then run upgrade command system CTL. Oh, sorry, sudo app get upgrade. All right, so all the updates, whatever bug fixes or patches were available, security fixes, those are applied to this newly installed Raspberry Pi this recipe config <coughs> sorry in recipe config we can configure many many things and all these things it is it is basically it is a very user friendly interface which I mean which allows any new person newbie to operate to do most essential tasks without much without running many commands or to handle this Raspberry Pi very easily and that's it for now
next video i will try to install and configure i will show you how to install pihole and how to use it how to configure it thank you